How do you want to structure your day? You wake up. What does that include? You know, when do you actually, if you're going to be behind a computer, when do you turn that on? Um, how, what are the blocks in your days? Do you get outside? Um, you know, how is your whole day structured? Have you built in what you need for yourself in order for you to be whole so you can show up to wherever you're going fully present, rested, restored with a clear mind, happy? Um, so are you setting yourself up for, for success as you structure your day? This is Evolve CPG, a community of purpose-driven brand leaders who not only believe in better, but actively pursue it. That's better products, better brands, and better leadership for a better world. Join our online community where we're going further, faster, together at community.evolvecpg.com. I'm your host, Gage Mitchell, founder and creative director of Modern Species, a sustainable brand design agency helping better brands grow and scale their impact. On this episode, we're speaking with Matt Demore and Linwood Paul, founders of Subtle Distinctions, about how the process of lifestyle design can help us achieve our dreams and live our best lives. Thanks, Gage, for uh, having us back on the podcast. Always uh, a blessing and something that we look forward to. Um, I'm Matt Demore, and we also have my business partner, um, Linwood Paul, here. And uh, we have got a company called Subtle Distinctions, and Subtle Distinctions um, helps individuals, um, business owners, and their teams ultimately get to the core of what's true for them, what they want more of, what they want less of, and how they can make the best decisions possible with the information that they have. And that's something that we work with on an integrative approach, meaning that we look at all aspects of the self and we take all that into consideration and apply it to their framework so that they can really create what they want to in life. Um, so we're, we're, we're glad to be here today. And um, we have a... Uh, a special treat for the listeners in a way that it's it's a, a slightly different look at a traditional podcast in something that we are going to uh, use our time today to introduce a framework and a structure that we've created in order for people to begin to lay down and uncover what's important for them to ultimately create what they want in life. Um, you hear oftentimes about People saying, live your best life and, um, you know, live your authentic life and, and create the life of your dreams. And they don't necessarily give them some practical, real world, tangible first steps in order to do that. Because such a large theoretical, conceptual idea um, that people often get stuck at the start line because they don't know really where to start. And so today we're going to introduce seven categories. And within each of those categories, we're going to give five prompts. And those five prompts are questions for the listener to uh, use to begin to really uncover their own truth as it relates to these categories. And comprehensively, the categories that we chose um, are the ones that we feel maybe will have the biggest impact um, in an individual's life. And, and there are more, of course, um, but these are seven. And these questions are an, the initial seed, so they're the start. They're not the comprehensive list by any means, but they're our initial offering to get the listener um, just questioning and asking themselves deeper uh, questions about those different aspects. So um, Lynn was going to share a little bit more about that, and then we're just going to dive right in. Hi, everybody. Um, whenever people do personal or professional growth, um, there's some terms that get utilized that um, we think need explanation or, or at least definition so that we can all start from the same place. Um, words like integrity, integrative, integrally um, uh, could be clouded or folks could not understand um, you know, one from the other. There's subtle distinctions between the three. And that's what we call our business, by the way. Um, so starting off with the first one, integrity. Um, integrity is a state of unimpaired soundness. That's how something holds its strength against pressure or energy or um, uh, difficulty. And then integrative <clears throat> is what we call ourselves as coaches. Um, integrative, by definition, is um, the use of a multidisciplinary approach approach that combines um, uh, conventional treatments, modalities, um, um, 
models with alternate therapies, modalities, and models, bringing them together. And then integrally, or integral means the necessary to the completeness of a whole. So when we talk about um, knowing yourself integrally today, we're talking about knowing yourself in the ways that it requires for you to understand yourself uh, completely as a whole so that you can apply it to whatever it is the challenge or the, the, the uh, opportunity of the day may be. So the place that we're going to start, Gage, which we feel is maybe one of the most important places to start because that really lays the foundation for everything else to be seen through, is a category that we're labeling as your dream. So um, the dream for us represents that aspect of ourself, that thing that we're trying to create that's bigger than ourselves. Um, so the first question that we have is, what do you dream of achieving in your life? If you could really take off any of the, the limiting beliefs or take off any of the um, undue expectations that you have on yourself, what do you really uh, dream of achieving? The second question is, what would you do if you had unlimited resources and no limitations? Um, oftentimes, our, our creation, our thought of what we think is possible is, is um, limited by the things that we deem as barriers or things that we can't have because of those things that are um, limiting us, whether that be money for a lot of people, location, what their parents might think, jobs. Um, and if we can move those to the side momentarily and really tap into that aspect of what would we do, because that's the energy that we want to really hold and, and, ha and hold vision for. Um, the third one is what makes you feel good? Do you even know inside of yourself what makes you feel good? Um, and that can be, you know, what, what makes me feel good is just spending the night uh, on the couch on a Friday night relaxing with my partner. Um, I love being in the woods. I just love blasting my music full on when I'm in my commute and just rock into some 80s Metallica, whatever, you know, whatever's going to make you feel good, you know. Um, also, what are you passionate about? What is that when you tap into that that topic or the, or whatever it is, but what really ignites that fire inside of you um, that just allows that creativity, that passion, that joy to come out inside of you? And then the last one in this category is, is what really gives you a sense of purpose? Um, when we are met with the items that life brings us, the challenges, the heartaches, the, the struggles, um, what can we connect into that will allow us to ride through those areas in the most graceful ways possible and come out holding something that is beyond those uh, preconceived notions that might kind of limit us and hold us in a place of, of not really living our best life? Um, so that's the category of the dream. Linwood, do you want to take us to uh, our next category? Um, what are your physical health needs? And there's four categories there, nutritional, movement, geography, and sleep. And in nutritional, the prompts or the questions are, how do you need to fuel your body for ultimate vitality? Um, in areas like hydration, are you hydrating properly? What does that mean to you? How do you know? Um, all of us uh, in this area know that certain foods don't work for us because we don't feel that well after we eat them. And, and, what, and, and people continue to do that. Um, and and, and the, the check engine light's coming on all the time and they know it. So it's really about, you know, what do you need? And then the second one is movement. What type of movement will best serve me? Uh, uh, for example, are we talking about restorative movement? And there's a, there's a, a, a fun um, juxtaposition uh, distinction here between working out and working in. Because when you work out, you're making an expenditure movement. Um, you're, you're, you're doing something, you're lifting weights, you're putting out, you're sweating, this and that, as opposed to, not as opposed to, but in conjunction with restorative movement, working in. And then in terms of geography, what, what type of physical surroundings best suit you? What kind of temperature do you want to live in? Do you want to be in and relating to humidity, the changing of seasons, and other natural rhythms that this planet has to offer us and that impacts us? And then the last one is sleep. What is your optimal level of sleep to maintain your vitality? Your vitality is the question there. That one's huge for me. Well, we all know. We all know. And, and it's a matter of, when we talk about knowing yourself integrally, it's a matter of not just knowing, but doing, engaging in processes once you've gone through these prompts that are 
uh, collaborative with what you're discovering about yourself and perhaps even what you've known about yourself for a very long time and haven't paid attention to. So the next category is your time, rhythm, and spatial needs. And um, I think people will tend to identify with the physical needs. I think a lot of folks have looked at what what kind of food do I need to uh, eat and and how do I need to move and all and the sleep those are kind of the big the big ones um, and then as we start to get more into some of these other categories we might not give them as much attention but they're going to have uh, you know just as much of an impact on our overall health and well being and creating the life that we want to and this is the big one especially with how busy we are getting as a society. Um, to be intentional with our time, rhythm, and spatial needs. So the first question that we have is, how do you want to structure your day? You wake up. What does that include? You know, when do you actually, if you're going to be behind a computer, when do you turn that on? Um, how, what are the blocks in your days? Do you get outside? Um, you know, how is your whole day structured? Have you built in what you need for yourself in order for you to be whole so you can show up to wherever you're going fully? present, rested, restored, with a clear mind, happy. Um, so are you setting yourself up for, for success as you structure your day? Um, the other um, thing that we have is how much time do you want to allot for each area of your life, your work, your family, yourself? What are those gaps? What does that look like for you in order to feel balanced? Okay, this is all about feeling balanced. Um, a third one, which many of us don't get to uh, give ourselves, is our alone time. So how much alone time do you need and how will you go about achieving that condition? When we're in a partnership, when we have kids, when there are other people that are dependent upon ourselves, how do we connect to ourself in a way that, again, that we can be present and full to give to others, right? You can't give what you don't have. And this is a, is a, a structure that's allowing us to make sure that we have what we need. And then the last um, uh, prompt that we have here is what type of living arrangement suits you? Um, and this could be anything from, I just really like being in the country. I don't want to be around anybody. I love being in the city. I love being able to go out, being on foot. I can be at that coffee shop whenever. Um, you know, what type of environment suits you? Do you want to live alone? Just, you know, do you, does it need, do you need to like have your own space? Even within a partnership, like, Sounds kind of crazy, but you know, do you want to have your own bedroom so you can get the best night's sleep? All those things might sound um, like, oh, Matt, that seems like to not be significant, but they're really, really impactful. So time, rhythm, and spatial needs, I think today more than ever are important to look at because you need to be intentional with how you get that because if not, um, you're really going to be at the whim of everything that life kind of dictates for you. All right. The next category that um, we have is our our mental health, um, and, and I think that's becoming more in the forefront these days about how to really take care of ourselves mentally as things become more challenging um, in the world, and that there uh, there's a lot more being asked of us in order to to maintain that space. Um, so that we've got three questions for for this category. The first question is: What type of thoughts feed my dreams? Because we know that thoughts become things and things become our reality. And so the first step in, in, in what we're suggesting here is just to pay attention. What, what story are you telling yourself? How are you treating yourself? Would you treat, your, you know, would you treat others like you're talking to yourself? And just really begin to identify what are those thoughts? Because those really are uh, a lot of the seed um, towards creating um, the life that we want. Um, the second thing, which is, is fairly close to that first one, is how can I become more aware of the story that I'm telling myself? And oftentimes story has a little bit of a stigma around it because people think, oh, what's your story, right? And there's a, typically a negative association with that. But we'll call it a narrative, a structure interpretation. But um, what is the what is that that you're telling yourself um, about what's possible for you, who you are, um, what type of relationship, how successful you are in business at relationships, um, you know, things that you might have with your health and just really pay attention because that is what you're creating. I always tell people you're going to prove yourself right. So even if it's in the negative, you got to be careful because you're going to prove that you can't do the thing that you're telling yourself to make yourself right. So, um, that's the second question. And then the last one is, how can I um, practice being more aware of uh, my psychological safety's mind's eye of detecting my safety? 
And what we say is that um, our nervous system gauge is always detecting and seldom aware. And so it's literally always trying to keep us safe, right? That's our brain's job is we're not being, you know, chased by a cyber tooth, you know, tiger anymore, but our brain still thinks that, right? So how can we become aware of where we're constantly um, seeing a, a situation that we're deeming unsafe that has our nervous system ramped up that then creates us, you know, creates tension inside of us. And that begins that ripple effect of creating that more nervous and, you know, anxious energy out into the world. Um, and how ultimately that turns back to affect our, our mindset and our mental state. So those are three important questions that I think that are, are really worth diving into because it's not very often that we're paying attention to those thoughts, to those stories that we're telling ourselves. Um, next category is family, cultural, people, and social. Um, so the first question we hear um, is how do you need to um, be supported by your family? And now single people, family is friends, people who are like, so, but when I say family, I'm extending that way past the traditional concept of, you know, a nuclear marriage or anything like that. It's those people who are loving and supportive of you and that are around you. Who do you determine to be your family? And um, do we get clear and specific on how we can be supported by them the best? So Gage, if you go to your partner and say, you know what, this is, these are a few things, or here is my list of things that you could you know, demonstrate to me through these ways that, that would show me that you support and love me and that would help me be in a better relationship with you. But we don't do that often, right? Um, so what is that? What type of cultural diversity do you desire? You know, um, that's something where uh, do we really get filled by being around people that are speaking different languages than us, have a different color skin than us, dress different than us, you know, eat different food? And what does that do for our creativity, our sense of knowing ourselves to expand our awareness of who are we living with on this planet, right? Um, and some people may just be okay with you know, watching some National Geographic videos of certain things and watching movies and other people are like, I want to go and experience and be with that type of people. Or I want to live in a city that's got diversity. Or I'm okay living in a small town in a rural small town in the middle of, you know, um, a state where there's not much diversity. And all of those are perfectly fine, but actually understanding what your needs are in those categories. Um, and then this is the big one that um, I really love is just what type of people do you want to surround yourself with? Compassionate, active, artistic, you know, um, worldly, and actually dial in and say, okay, why? Because you become the sum of the five people that you hang out with the most. You take on their thoughts, you take on their financial situation, you take on their relationship status, you take on how much drama they have in their life, you become them. So who do you want to become? And you better watch out who you're with because that's what's happening. So taking a scan in your world and saying, you know what? I want to surround myself with these type of people. I want to evolve myself. Um, and can they support me in becoming more of myself? Um, and we've got two more categories. Um, spiritual. This is the, uh, the, one of the second to the last category. We've got three questions here. Um, what does my spiritual practice look like? And by the definition of spiritual, what we're saying is something that's greater than yourself, whatever you decide to deem it and call it, it doesn't matter to us. Um, and it could be, you know what, my spiritual practice is taking a walk into the woods, connecting with the animals there, you know, taking a swim in the river and just being present with how beautiful nature is. It could be saying the rosary for some people who are Catholic and it's, you know, whatever that might be. It could be any of that. It doesn't matter. What is your spiritual practice look like and how are you connecting with an energy that's bigger than yourself? Um, and then when do you feel most fulfilled? Okay, so this is another what really makes you feel like, wow, I'm just like overflowing with awesomeness because I'm so excited. And then... Um, Another question that we have here, and this is our last question, is how do you voice your gratitude? Oftentimes, we have a lot of thoughts about ways in which we appreciate things for other people or what we're grateful for, but do we express it to them? And how do we express it? And when do we express it? So how can we really understand this concept of gratitude in terms of what does it look like in our life? Um, because we hear like the gratitude practice, right? It's like, yeah, 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 cool. But really, what does this mean for you? 
Um, and then lastly, and this is something too that oftentimes is is overlooked in the the wellness arena, um, but if that's the financial and income, and oftentimes has the most, I would say, uh, heaviness around it for people. And this is something that we're you know really um, adamant about making sure that people are aware of in their relationship with money. So um, the first question that we have is what does your income need what do what does your income need to be in order to be fulfilled? Have you really you know you there's a certain amount for certain people that they say my safety and security needs are met and that you know for some it's I need 50,000 some says I need 300,000 some says I just need like you know 500 bucks a month or other people you know get scared with 3 million in the bank right it's all relative what is it for you? And identifying that, um, how secure do you need to be? And that's a, a parlay off of that question. You know, I need to have six months in savings. I need to have five years in savings. I need to be set. I just need to be able to cover my bills for the month. But again, not making any sort of judgment on what that number is. We don't care. It's do you know actually what that is for you? Um, and then how much money do you need to have in the bank? Um, and getting clear on that. Um, and then lastly is. Um, how do you want to get paid to feel secure? Are you somebody that, you know what, I, I need to have an hourly position because I need to make sure that no matter what happens, that check's going to come in the mail and I'm going to be guaranteed my money. Or is it, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur where I'm okay with some ups and downs in cash flow. I know that in order for me to create what I want, I have to go out there and seed something in. I got to really make it happen. And I'm okay with potentially the, the higher risk, um, but maybe a bigger reward. Or I like commission structure because I want to be in charge of as much as my uh, as I can um, my destiny. The more I work, the more I can potentially gain. And then lastly, ultimately, what is your relationship with money? This is a big one. There's a lot of there's so much stuff around money for people. There's so much guilt. There's so much shame. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of just unknowing. And so there's there's a ton of gunk that is around money for people. So just not doing anything, but like, how did you get to the place to think how you are about money? And how is that influencing your life right now? And is that working for you? Great. So those are the categories, Gage, um, that we have come up with as a foundation. And again, I just wanted to um, reiterate again that these are just some initial prompts. Our goal is that um, they take these prompts and just use them as a as a catapult into going deeper into these categories and really what makes sense for them. But if you take a half hour, 35 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever you need to, um, get yourself into your happy place, grab a cup of coffee, whatever you want to do, and sit down and really ask yourself these questions. Um, it's a powerful practice. Um, you don't need to go through, you know, this elaborate 17 day course. Like if you just sit with these questions, these will move the needle in a way that is profound. Um, and so radical change doesn't need to be extravagant. It doesn't need to be complicated. It's like, let me get clear on my, what's true for me. And then I'm just going to sit with that and I'm going to decide what I want to do with that. And this part of the process is, what is it? And then the next part, which this is where we also help people with, which is, great, now what? So that was the so what. And then the next part of this process is, and now what are you going to do about it, right? Um, but this is where we start. So hopefully this will give some benefit to everyone that's listening. Um, we get super pumped about this because this is really in our minds where yeah, you know, the good stuff lies and you can apply this because when you show up, when you become more whole, you've got a direction, no matter what you're connected to, whether it's a partnership, your family, a business, if you're an employee, it doesn't matter. They are going to get the benefit of you becoming more of yourself. And that's really what we, you know, try to support people in doing is becoming more of themselves, freeing themselves of their own limitations, of their own kind of limiting factors and just you know, doing it up, man, living, living a life that they get excited about, that they get proud of and, um, that they can have an impact that they want to on and just, just, you know, do it in a way that is fulfilling. So appreciate you letting us hang out. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a big framework geek in general for all, all different types of things, whether it's professional stuff or personal stuff. Um, and I'm a big advocate for 
encouraging people to choose their path because if you don't choose your path, someone else will choose it for you, right? Whether it's your boss, your spouse, your friends, whatever, they'll pick a path for you if you don't pick one. So I love these kind of frameworks that just help people dig deep and, and get introspective and and really kind of start to put some notes down on a piece of paper or, or let your mind swirl on some of these topics about what kind of life you really want to be leading. And then from there, they can start making decisions about how to adjust their life here or there to get themselves closer to the path that they feel will be best for them. And know that no path is one road, right? There's lots of little side paths that you can jaunt off onto and then come back to the main path at some point. So I, I love this kind of stuff. Um, so f- for those of you who are um, still following along, we will put up a worksheet capturing all this so you didn't have to like write all that down <laughs> um, or anything like that. We'll put, post the worksheet up in the show notes on our website at evolvedcpg.com so that you have access to that and you can dig through this exercise. Matt, you were mentioning that um, this is just the beginning. Are you even picturing that people use this as a starting point and then they fill in the rest of the gaps? Or by this is just the beginning, do you mean you two, Linwood and Matt, have like further steps um, to this process that um, you could guide people through? It's a great question, Gage. I would say uh, it's a both and. Um, we have created a five-part um, series where the know yourself integrally, the one that we just took you through is the step one. So we've got four additional steps um, to this process that in, in essence is um, something that we have found captures all the parts of, of the learning process, of the behavioral change process. Um, and so uh, yes, it's, it's this is one of five, and the just the step this alone to gauge. I just want to say is is enough to really um, provide a lot of impact. Um, but as as the start, we feel um, even if you've been on a personal growth path forever, awesome. Refresh yourself. You know, if you're a business, do you have one you know kind of a, a strategic plan meeting and then stop for the rest of your business? No, you do it quarterly or biannually or every year. So this is also prime territory for people who have been in a deep personal growth path for a long time and just to make sure that they are kept up to speed with where they're at right now. Nice. And um, Linwood, I know we had a little tech issue, but you're, you're back in live. So do you have any closing thoughts as we wrap up this conversation? Sure. Let's, let's go right back to uh, the beginning. Let's look at it in those three words, integrity, integrative, and integral. When it comes to integrity, that being the state of unimpaired soundness, there's going to be things that push you around that aren't going to, that you think won't allow you the time that it takes to do this kind of work. Be, be, be integrous. Push back. Make, we, 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 when we talk about time, we talk about finding the time, making the time, taking the time. And where nobody's going to find any more time, there's 24-7. If there was somebody out there that could manufacture time and make it for us, they would be chased down the street by everybody else on the planet. So what we're really talking about is taking the time. Be uh, exercise integrity with respect to doing this work as it relates to in- integrative. Um, there are lots of conventional ways to go about identifying your authenticity. This may be seen as an alternative way to do that, to stop to take the time to answer these questions, to actually do something that gets you the information that you need to figure out who the heck you are, what it is that you need, and how you best go about it. And when we say the whole package is to know yourself integrally, it is a necessity to know who you are, to complete yourself as a whole. Because everywhere you go, there you are, and everyone that you've ever wanted to serve in your life is going to depend on you being as complete a human being and as whole a human being as possible. Thank you, Gage. Love it. Beautiful. Well, thank you both again for carving out some time to share some wisdom with us. Again, we'll post up uh, the framework for this step on evolvecpg.com. And then, you know, maybe we'll, maybe we'll continue this as a series or maybe we'll set up a class or something. TBD. But, you know, thank you both for um, sharing some of your wisdom. Appreciate it. We would, we would love that. Thank you. Beth, thanks, man. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to learn more about Linwood, Matt, or their company, go to subtledistinctions.com. 
Subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel for more innovator interviews, expert advice, and leadership discussions. If you like this episode, leave a heart, thumbs up, or review, and share it with your colleagues. As an ever-evolving show, we also love feedback, so send us your thoughts or ideas for who we should talk to next to evolve at modernspecies.com.